Hey all, this is part three, and we're going to apply a method to a nested array. Now after we do this, you want to keep in mind that virtually every method that we used inside of the working with arrays, methods, section, and operators uh, could be applied in this exact same fashion. We're going to show you one. The idea is that you could do shift, push, pop. Any of the ones that we did inside of working with arrays are going to work exactly the same as we're about to describe. Um, also, if you're curious why the markdown isn't formatted here, but is formatted here, you are not alone. I have gone over the markdown for this, which is what this is written in, um, enough times to not care anymore. There's like an error that's going on inside of there, so all we're going to worry about is once we put this over to uh, a replit to see if it works there, but this does work, so let's let's get started. So we want a, uh, we have a situation, we have a couple of nested arrays, we want to add a 7 to the front of this array here. So this is a comment, so we assume that it's not actually part of the array. So let's copy all of this and see what's going on. Okay, so here's our nested array, and as you can see, it's a comment. So this array only, this inner array only contains eight and nine. We want to put seven at the beginning of that. So let's start with by accessing our nested array, which we've done here, nested array at two, which as we can see is this array with just the, just the numbers eight and nine, which is good. So now that we have that, we're going to say nested array at two dot unshift seven. So we can run this and we'll see that the nested array now has one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, nine. So the other thing that we did previously was something called an alias, which is inner array is gonna be equal to nested array at two. And all this does is just give us a more convenient way to name the nested array at index two. So we haven't really changed anything from what we just did. We're gonna get the exact same result, but that is a way to, if you're having trouble with this concept, to give yourself a more convenient name to access it by. So let's talk about our places. We've got a bunch of um, first, second, third. We want fourth there and then fifth and sixth. So we have two inner arrays. And the first element of the second array is what we need to kind of affect. So the inner places array uh, places at one. The fourth place is going to be the string. Um, index of the nested array, so places at the index of the nested array dot unshift fourth place. Well, the same idea, just a couple of variables stuck in there as well. And as you can see, we've successfully pushed, and sorry, we've successfully unshifted the second array, or the array located in index one, and added our fourth place in there. So, this is one of those concepts where it'll take you a little bit. Um, it might not, but it also, if it does, don't, don't beat yourself up about it. Just keep practicing, come back to the documentation if you need to, and um, eventually the pattern will start to make sense. So we have unformatted markdown here again. Again, not really sure why. We're going to complete a function that takes in three parameters, a nested array of arrays, an index, and an element, then adds the element to the front of the inner array located at the index within the input array of arrays, and returns the array of arrays. Your function should use the unshift method to add the input element to the front of the inner array located at the given index of the array of arrays, then return that array or arrays. Hmm. I should say array of arrays. Below are examples of the code running. Assuming that you will have completed the described function, apply unshift again. Even though our task has become slightly more complicated, our methodology is identical. We're going to copy the stub, copy the test cases, excuse me, and then follow the pseudocode. So add the element to the front of the inner array located within the array of arrays located at the index. So it might seem complicated, but it's relatively straightforward. So array of arrays at index, and this is going to give us our inner array. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to say inner array is equal to array of arrays at the index, because if we have an array of arrays, and we access that array of arrays at an index, that's going to be an inner array. So now that we have the inner array accessed, we're going to say inner array dot unshift, and then we unshift the element. Now that we've done that, array of arrays will contain what it needs to contain, so we'll return array of arrays. So if we run this, let's have a look. This will be a little bit more complicated to figure out if we did it correctly. So 1, 3, 5, 10, 11, 9, 4. 1, 3, 5, 10, 11, 9, 4. IQ, AG, BC, EF, HI. IQ, AG, BC, EF, HI. Excellent. Now, let's go ahead and copy this. 
paste it into the input window. And that paints our fence. And in case you're curious, that's the uh, metaphors we're going to be using. Instead of being in good shape, we're going to be talking about kind of like household projects. So the first one, we have painted our fence. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.